one end of the scale, it could be mass extinction. Of course, there's no other chance like this. Well, this is my only chance. That reef provides six billion dollars of tourism money to Queensland. The floods and cyclonic weather at the beginning of this year have had a devastating effect on so many Australians. But it's not just the people who have felt the impact. Up here in northern Queensland, something has changed over the last six months and it's got a lot of people worried. I've joined a team from WWF on a trip to hopefully get to the bottom of why hundreds of endangered marine turtles have washed up dead within the Great Barrier Reef. So over the last few months we've really seen a massive spike in the number of turtles washing up onto Queensland beaches, perhaps up to 200, maybe even 300 percent in some locations. Um, and that's really concerning because these are endangered species, they are critically important to the health of the Great Barrier Reef. Dermot O'Gorman is the head of WWF Australia and is part of a joint operation near Townsville, catching, tagging and releasing green sea turtles. The hope is to see the effect our recent wild weather has had on turtles feeding in the impact zone. The only way to catch these turtles who are remarkably fast underwater is really to jump them rodeo style, bring them back onto the boat and have them measured up here. But you've got to keep your eyes peeled because they really are tough to see. Okay, here, we go. here we go, here we go. <laughs> We write the tag number on, on the plaster on here so we always know which turtle we're working with. We weigh them and measure the curved carapace length. Then we uh, check them for parasites and we take a sample for heavy metal analysis. While the seagrass beds are disappearing, the turtles, who have been around for more than a hundred million years, are becoming susceptible to more unusual problems. A rare virus called fibropapilloma that hides from the turtle's immune system. Our question is, how come we have such a high proportion of juvenile turtles with fibropapilloma in this small area? Is it because they arrive in this area quite healthy and then they become sick after being here for a while? Or is it that all the sick turtles from the region will slowly drift into this small bay and, uh, and get stuck in there? It's questions like these that need to be answered quickly to make sure our beautiful green sea turtle populations bounce back to health. And the indigenous community know exactly how important this work is. Happy! <laughs> I'm so happy. By combining their intimate knowledge of the oceans with modern day science, the project is building momentum and learning more every single day. Reef HQ Turtle Hospital is where some of the lucky turtles end up. Not only does it give them a chance to build up their strength and be monitored in a safe environment, but it also allows the public a chance to see these endangered animals up close. There's no doubt these turtles need a helping hand. And with some of the very best facilities available, they're being given a fighting chance. We try to keep them cool, we cover their, their faces with a little hood so they don't get frightened by all the movements and sand and sun, so yeah, they can be here for a while. But Very easy to fall in love with, aren't they? Yeah, they are. They're pretty <laughs> fluffy and cuddly. <laughs> what a fantastic team looking after these animals, but with forecasts of wild weather to hit the Queensland coast this summer, these animals are going to need all the help they can get. You right? Let's go, Mum. Go! She's away.